Well, hello, and welcome back to the layout. I haven't really been making many videos because I have been pretty busy. So I wanted to celebrate my one year anniversary on YouTube. And like you saw that on camera. Yeah, that that's my BN6770. The dish lights and all the dish truck decoders messed up. So it does that does that every once in a while, which is kind of strange, because it's supposed to have a dish lights, but sometimes, but every, but it never does, and every once in a while it pop back up. But anyways, I want to, I wanted to celebrate my one year anniversary on YouTube, but which was last May 11th, but because of National Train Day, I was too, and other things going on, I was too busy to celebrate. So now I, so I'm gonna celebrate now. And so, I'm one year on, so now I'm finally one year on YouTube. I haven't, and one year ago I wasn't really doing much until June 14th, I, I think it was, where I finally rail fans, and from there I rail fans more and more, so that's where it all, that's when, really, that's really when my YouTube channel started. And I also uploaded some of my older videos. But this, my summer's almost over, so next week it actually would be summer for me. So I am planning the rail fan. I hope I can. I'm going to, I'm going to be rail fanning the CN Wak Wakasha sub, which is by me. Um, and I want to rail fan that more because it has more freights instead of the Harvard sub which only has passenger service which they only has metro passenger service I should say but if you see uh, look at the schedule that's one normal day yeah that's that's uh, that was Chicago to Harvard so outbound trains and that's it has the same amount of inbound trains for one day so there show you a little bit. Here's the schedule I got. Yeah, it has quite a few trains on a normal weekday. This is from 602 to 60 to 664. And that's um, outbound and inbound goes from 603 all the way to 601, but it's really 665. So there's plenty of passenger, but that's all there is. While the Waukesha sub has about 40 freight uh, freight trains a day, so I'll be wanting to rail fan there and get more freight trains. So I think I'm gonna have a running video. So I got my Metro on the outside track running inbound as you can see there's the locomotive in reverse and I usually run it on this track because my I usually don't run my SD7 I mean SD40 and I run my SD70 instead because this SD40 the Digitrax the deco motor decoder I have in there kind of glitches out a lot so I'm gonna probably get a new one but it's only the motor the motor one and the sound one are separate luckily on this one on this unit, so I can just get a simple. I'm thinking of an NCE uh, $20 decoder just to put in there for motor controls, and I'll have extended light functions because I have my NCE power power cab, so I'll be able to easily program better light functions. Like I was saying about the CN tracks. Um, this is the Waukesha sub, and as you see, there's a train going from Buffalo Grove, the Mount, to um, South Devil to the yard. Actually, no, not the yard. It's no, it is the yard. It's right there. And then you also have this train going in, probably go um, east on the Milwaukee District West Line or the Elgin Subdivision. And also a really interesting thing is there's a train right there, which is quite rare. And another one on the yard lead, and there's one going through Gray's Lake. There's plenty of trains there. And also, here is the 
Harvard sub. Uh, this is also this is the Harvard, um, Milwaukee, and Kenosha subs all together in one, so I can see it all. But um, yeah, here's the train right now going to the Craig and Weed, uh, which is very rare, like I said before in the other clip. And you can see the met the regular metros, one in inbound and outbound, and arriving at Harvard. So. This is the line. This this is the line that has all metros, and this is the one that has mostly freights. Now the freight service on the Waukesha sub is um, it has freights all the time, but then the path, but then metro service is only during the weekdays and usually at and at rush hour. There's usually about 16 trains a day on this versus uh, 30 to 40 on the Harvard. But then they also fill it in with freights. Although it's not as many trains a day on the Waukesha versus the Harvard, uh, there's also more freights on the Waukesha. And so that's the one I'm going to rail fan. More in the summer. And in celebration of my one year anniversary, I am going to run a few trains here and that and that's pretty much it so here's a nice view of the layout and let's do the layout tour while we're at it so we'll, we'll start here on this curve so as you go around this curve you see these two tracks on the outside what these two tracks are, they're passenger siding. Um, I can fit two cars on the out inside, two cars on the outside, and I can put the locomotive on either track, but it will be hang hanging over the switch. So, here's the switch for that, and it, there's another switch, and there it is. And this is just a small piece of flex track. Here's a passenger train inbound RTA coaches and a Metro F40 and then here is BN unit so talking about freight if once this moves I can show you the switch there's another inbound it's the same one I haven't gotten that clue. Um, right here is a switch for a yard, which has one piece. I believe this is 18 radius and one 18 radius curve. And here we have a switch and have two more. So this makes a four track yard. Pretty small yard, but I can hold about, so I have four or five in there, and I have. 12, so 5 plus 12 would be 17 cars. So this can hold about 17 normal freight cars, so about 50 scale feet. Maybe a little longer, maybe like 60 scale feet. But that's what I can hold in this yard. So moving along. Here we have a nice few houses and a pond of which my pliers are in the middle of. So we have some floating giant pliers and a boat. Now I know this is all larger than scale, but it's just something to have there. And this house actually is lit up. That one right there. See if I open this up and see LED, the LED right there. I wired that up with a resistor. I don't know how many ohms because I wired it before I knew what ohms were. So, and I don't want to rip it apart to, just to find out. So, here I have ties and styrofoam. So I have to get, I might make it a little hill right there. 
So I have just ties over here, just miscellaneous ties. So just in case if I'm doing track work and I need an extra tie, I can go over here and I have a huge pile there and more there. And I also got rails here and there's a little rail house right there. And where our two trains, where my two trains are, I have a crossing with the main road right there. And I have a public safety building my friend built, and I hot glued. He cut it out all the cardboard and stuff. And then there's a shop that was donated by a friend. Also, that was donated by the same friend too. He had and we had painted it with his model paint. And I also have a light, a street lamp there. Got that not last Easter, but a year from Easter. So. Yeah, that's what I got. And let's go over to the other side real quick, because this memory memory card is almost full, so I only have five minutes left. And let's get over here. This is my yard. And I have this siding. This uh, siding. I have this in here temporarily before I get a switch. I need another switch, but I need to buy it first. And I'm going to get it with the motor. So here's a crossover. See, I'm not train going right over. And I have two stations. Uh, this one was a kit I got, I think, two years ago. Um, it also came with that um, freight yard. And if you're wondering, that platform came from my father. And here. We have uh, another station platform. I built this out of balsa wood, cardboard, and hot glue. So if you're interested in looking at the video, I have it upload, upload it not too long ago. Um, and here's the site. Yeah, about this siding. This is to the shop, which the shop's also lighted. Um, right now, I'm just storing this for all my uh, cars with, with the horn hook couplers instead of. The normal couplers that you can see from this Atlas one right there. But that's just about it. And you might notice this is the only ballast, ballasted part. That's because I, re I redid, I, re I ballasted this whole entire thing. I had it perfect and, no, not really perfect, but I had it all ballasted. And then I tore it all up except that little spot, which works fine cars and they're all derailed so I can't move them and you might be wondering about this odd pattern and that's because of the original design was actually a reverse loop so the switch would have gone around and where the yard switch came it would have been a reverse loop and this edge of this and see that sharpie right there that's where it would have came but the problem with that is that it was very tight of a turn and it never really worked. So I just decided no reverse loop, just use my hands. And this is what I and this is what it ended up coming to. So if I am not lazy enough, I will probably put in a few photos of the layout at older times. But Thanks for watching.